beautiful little fish sitting right on that soft edge. Typical spot you're gonna find one of those fish. So today we're on the epic Tyena River in Tasmania, which is just loaded with these beautiful little wild browns such as this. I'll run you through the Euro nymphing technique, which is amazingly effective for waters such as this in Australia and all over the world. This little guy can go back in and we'll get into it. So Euro nymphing is a great technique for these faster bits of water. It's where conventional fly fishing is a bit harder. And that's why you do it, because you get lovely fish like that. I've dropped the line. There's a bit going on here. Get back in touch with him. Best thing is to do is to not panic. Stuff like that always goes on. Get him in the net. So the tops of these runs are stacked with these beautiful little fish. Euro nymphing makes it easy to get into those fish. I'm so looking forward to today. Get that fly out of him there. He ate it so well. Cracking little fish. All right, dude, off you go. Get that out of there. Put these back in here and we're into it. All right, had a couple through there. It's funny, first thing in the morning, haven't quite found the groove yet. Things are gonna get sharper as the day goes on. All right, really nice bit of water here. It's first thing in the morning, it's still quite cold. There's not many bugs around and I haven't seen any fish rise. So I'm gonna to go to the top, run my nymphs through because that's where I reckon the fish are gonna be. So this back half of the pool is not the ideal nymphing water, but because I'm going past, I'm just gonna chuck a couple of casts in there because it can't hurt. So Euro nymphing has come about from competition fly fishing and it's because trout do 90% of their feeding subsurface. So by using weighted nymphs on a thin leader, you can get down to depth and you'll catch a lot more fish. So you've probably noticed I'm not actually doing a conventional fly cast. And that's because with this Euro nymphing setup, I'm using a zero weight fly line, which has no taper. So I'm using the weight of the bead coming out of the water or bow and arrow cast, depending on what sort of cover I'm in to get the fly where I want it to go. There's one, beautiful. And with Euro nymphing, you're actually doing a nice natural drift. You don't want to be pulling your flies. You want that fly to be coming down the river just like it would with a natural bug. And this technique's all about contact. You always want to have good contact. And when you're fishing and you're catching a few fish and you're hooking them right in the top of the lip like that one is, you know you've got good contact. So I just get the fly out of him. All the flies I have in my fly box are all barbless, which is not only great for the fish, it's great for me as well, just in case I get one in my hand. They pop straight out, and he can go back on his way. Very nice. So I'm casting out, I'm stripping with my left hand to keep in touch, rather than lifting my rod, because the higher I lift my rod, the further away I'm going to be from the fish when I want to strike. Well, this is a good time to run you through what a Euro nymphing leader is and how to get set up for yourself. So I'll get this leader off so you can have a look at it. So it consists of four parts. So you've got a section of colour which is about a rod length long and then you've got a clear section which distinguishes your main colour from your indicator. So your indicator's there so you can see the bites and you know what your flies are doing and what depth they're at. 
On the end of the indicator, I've got a micro ring, which then I can attach my tippet to, and then the fly. So the length of your tippet is dependent on the water depth. So for deeper sections, you want a longer tippet. Today, because the water's quite overgrown, I'm just fishing a single nymph. But in bigger open rivers, you can fish two flies with this rig, which is very effective. So there's a good looking run up there. Let's go fish it. So what I like to do when I approach these bits of river is to actually grid it. So I'm working from the nearest side, fanning my cast all the way to the other side. Once I've done that, I go up to about where my cast is finished and I repeat the process. That way I'm covering every inch of the water. Right in the middle of the heavy water. Nice little brownie. So typically in Tasmania, you'll find fish on the softer edges, but sometimes just like that, you'll find them in the heavier water too. So just cover everything. There he is. Well, as much as I thought there was gonna be more in there, i move up to the next bit. Very nice. Second cast into that run. What a cracker. Don't get into the trees. Come back, come back. That was awesome. It was such a typical urinimping bit of water. There was always going to be one in there. And he's almost got me in the trees. Beautiful fish. Get out of there. All right, now that I've, I'm going to say I've slightly got him under control, I need to clear the line, get that back onto the reel so I don't get tangled up into it. I can get a good shot with the net. That was so good, what an awesome take. There he is, yeah! And this is a perfect example of why the tie-in is so special. Beautiful red spotted wild brown. And the tie-in has actually got one of the highest head count of fish per kilometer in a river in Tasmania. And there's just so many to catch. That is awesome. Off he goes. Just on the swing. That was really cool. Every now and again, I'd say every fourth or fifth cast, I like to swing my flies around. This gives them something different. So instead of your fly coming down naturally, it's actually rising up in the water, much like an insect would do when it's about to hatch on the surface. Little Tyena beauty. Off he goes. So on the swing again. Oh, a stunning little brown. Nice. Okay, little dude. Pop the hook out of you. Hook's just falling out. Away he goes.
bit deeper water at the top of the run there. Let's say go with a heavier bead. Same fly, just a heavier bead. Just got that bit deeper. There was another fish in there. Nice. So a lot of people look in my fly box and wonder why I've got so many different bead colors. But last time I fished a Tyena, silver was the go-to color, but changing to gold, I've got three fish out of that run. Off you go, buddy. Holy dooly, check him out. He is a banger. <laughs> Just swimming across the surface. How cool is Tasmania? <laughs> He's such a good swimmer. Wow. Not that I want to go any closer, but prior to this snake being there, I actually saw a rat jump into the water three times and I reckon the rat was chasing bugs and this snake has heard him or seen him doing it and now he's waiting for that rat to come back. And I'm all for the snake because I hate rats. Awesome, sitting right in that softer edge on the other side there. Get him in, yeah, that's nice. Tyena River in Tasmania is just such an epic fishery. I've caught fish well over 10 pounds in this river too, but I absolutely love coming and catching these little wild brownies. Urinymphing is a great technique if you're coming to fish this river. I strongly suggest you try it.